You're finally pregnant. Congratulations. Yet you've got the worst eczema and atopic dermatitis of your life. What are we going to do about it? Are you struggling with itchy, hot, rashy skin during your pregnancy months? If so, then keep watching because in this video today, I'm going to talk about pregnancy alongside heightened eczema and atopic dermatitis. It really is still much of a mystery as to why some of us who have had eczema all our lives end up actually having relieved symptoms such as no more eczema or atopic dermatitis and those who've had very, very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all previously, then when they fall pregnant, they end up having much more heightened symptoms with a lot more side effects and alongside that, a lot of itching, burning, rashy skin. And this really does correlate and go hand in hand with the reasons why some of us have morning sickness and some of us don't some of us are more sensitive and susceptible to certain foods and smells and some of us aren't. I myself, I was extremely lucky having had eczema since birth and really chronic skin conditions most of my life. When I fell pregnant, my symptoms were relieved. I no longer had that, that itchy skin. I no longer needed to use topical steroids. I no longer needed to treat my skin. I literally would wake up in the morning and my skin would just be glowing and end off. I didn't have any symptoms at all. I literally considered this to be such a blessing and such a relief because my normal day-to-day -day life before pregnancies were really, really terrorizing. But I'm not here to talk about me and my condition and what I went through. I'm here to talk about you guys because you guys have written in to me on several occasions talking about pregnancy and their eczema and those symptoms really becoming more aggravating and more heightened. So I thought I'd make a video for you guys because I thought it's really worthwhile discussing what I consider the theories to be behind why you're probably more itchy and more sensitive to things around you and how we can treat it and how we can really get on top of it so you can begin to enjoy your pregnancy. So this video is really based upon my own personal opinion and my own personal experience having had my kids and my theory behind it. And I'm gonna share my theories with you. And I think you might find that these theories that I have do have quite a lot of clout because they do seem to kind of make sense. And do know, as a disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional. This is purely my point of view. So take it as you will, take it as a pinch of salt. But this is what I believe in as to why some of us end up having more chronic eczema during our pregnancy times than others and actually what is causing that? What is that underlying issue that's causing those skin eruptions? So this type of pregnancy eczema they call PUPS and it stands for Pruritic Uticarical Papular Plaque of Pregnancy, otherwise known as PUPS. I'll put it in the description below so you can understand very common and it's often in your third trimester and it's all around the belly area. So first up, one of the main reasons as to why you might be breaking out an ex more atopic dermatitis is really down to the fact that as you are carrying child, your gut is slowing down and so is your liver. You're just not filtering things as fast as you normally would because it's basically taking up that physical space within your body and also because of the hormonal changes, you're just processing your food and your oxygen just that little bit differently because you're sharing, obviously, you're sharing with your child, you're sharing with your fetus, and in that particular instance, it might actually cause inflammation coming from the gut or coming from the liver. And what we can do to help bring that pace back up again and allow your internal organs to be functioning at their best possible and optimum level so that it's not creating that inflammation on your skin. And in order to do this, we need to address our diet first and foremostly as to how we're processing our food. And often that means removing a lot of inflammatory foods such as gluten, such as dairy, such as soy, such as corn, such as citrus foods, such as nuts. Those types of foods need to be removed for the diet and then we can observe how that inflammation may or may not be reacting on your skin as you might find that you tend to alleviate your symptoms all for the better. So that we're creating a good gut lining, a good healthy gut bio and also having very good bowel movements at the same time. Now I know on the subject of dairy, a lot of you are thinking, oh, I need all the calcium I can get for baby to grow. But in actual fact, you can get so much calcium from leafy greens, in fact, perhaps even more. But if you are somebody who really wants to stick with dairy, then I would suggest just giving up the cow dairy and sticking with sheep. Sheep maybe over goat as well, because sheep is a 
type of dairy that really that has the least amount of hormones pumped into it or least amount of antibiotics pumped into it so it's a much more natural type of dairy produce over cow and goat and it tastes pretty good too my second theory is estrogen and also all our hormonal changes, which is kind of like why some of us get morning sickness and some of us don't and some of us cannot stand the smell of gherkins and others want to eat the 10 jars a day, that sort of thing. So really it comes down to your hormonal balance and what that balance is or imbalance that might be causing that skin eruption, that skin irritation, that perhaps or just general eczema or atopic dermatitis anywhere all over the body. And this also comes down to the estrogen levels. So typically those that are older or older mums tend to have less estrogen. And then when we fall pregnant, our estrogen levels kind of balance out or they heighten a little bit more, which basically can help actually clear up the eczema. Um, and those that may be younger mums or in their early 30s that have more balanced estrogen generally, they might break out more because that heightened amount of estrogen might actually be what's causing a lot of those skin eruptions to begin with. So as I said before, sometimes some mums are a lot more sensitive to things around them than others. And this also rings true when it comes to the environment, the things around your house, the cleaning products, the products that you use to take a shower with, your shampoo, all of that. And I've said this in so many of my other videos, which I'm sure for those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis, you've heard it a thousand times. But for those of you who are new to my channel, I tell you the things that you surround yourself with have a huge impact on your life. It has a huge impact on your liver. It has a huge impact on your senses. So think about the soaps that you're using and think about changing out and swapping out the things that don't have things such as sodium lauryl sulfate. You want to remove those from all your washing products and all your hygiene products. You want to really try thinking about using a much more natural washing powder in terms of your laundry. I really like the True Earth, as you guys have heard me talk about in previous videos, but I'll put that down in the link below. It's a really brilliant washing strips that come in the post and these little strips you just chuck them into your machine and they have no sodium lauryl sulfate so it's not stripping loads away from your skin and not causing that irritation that you might have more heightened sensitivity towards during your pregnancy months. The same goes for your household products opting for much more natural products to clean your house such as just plain old vinegar and water and maybe even a squeeze of lemon juice and a bit of bicarb soda might be the way forward than thinking about anything that you can find off the supermarket shelves and if you do find that you're still reacting think about switching things out and changing things up and going down the much more natural route when it comes to your hygiene products your household products and your washing products Next up, what we can do physically is think about phototherapy or LED light therapy. These are two therapies that could really help target a lot of topical issues, but obviously we're not working on the inside out. We are working on the outside in, but it can give you temporary relief. So go ahead and check out some of those online and you can see with your local medical practitioner if you can do phototherapy or alternatively you can consider investing in an LED light to try and overcome and bring down that inflammation topically from the outside. Neither the red light or the UV light can harm you or the baby. Consider increasing your vitamin C levels as well. And alongside that, do check your vitamin D levels too. You can have this, these checked by a medical practitioner as well, because increasing these can really also help the skin from the inside out too, just stabilizing that itch, reducing that inflammation with vitamin C. And then with the vitamin D, it's just giving your skin that boost that it needs and helps regulate those hormones. At the same time, consider doing your nails. And I love to do my nails, I actually do mine myself now. Um, you can actually get organic manicure nail kit that can also just help have to smooth over those edges. You can cut them right back and then file them right down. And then with the organic uh, gel nail kit that you can get, you can actually have them smoothed over or you can get it done by professional as well. Go to Just go to a nail salon and give yourself that little treat. Homeopathy is another brilliant and natural way and very safe for you and baby that you can be taking whilst you're pregnant. These homeopathic remedies can really help dial down a lot of the symptoms, a lot of that hot, red itchiness that you have that's really aggravating you and your pregnancy. Go ahead and check out this video that I did with 
my homeopath, Julie Edgley, where she talks about all the different types of remedies that you can be taking for various different symptoms of your eczema and atopic dermatitis. And at the same time, I'll put her details in the link below. If you need to seek out a homeopath, she can help recommend one. Otherwise, you can actually have an online appointment with her as she does online appointments worldwide. So in terms of what we can put on our skin whilst we're pregnant, here are a few of my top favorites. First off, I really like to do a mask with honey, rose water and aloe vera. And here we have the honey. Organic honey is best with aloe vera. And I would just make a little um, pot of this and just put in a couple of teaspoons of the honey, a few squirts of the aloe vera and a few squirts of the rose water and mix that all up. And then I used to put that all over my face and neck um, during my TSW days, you can put this all over your belly or all over your body and it really just helps to calm that inflammation down. It really helps give the body that hydration, give the skin that, that drink, so to speak, and just to really help calm the skin down. So that's a wonderful mask you can do in the bath. Body butters for those of you who are pregnant with pregnancy eczema, atopic dermatitis, I cannot recommend body butters enough. They don't work for those with TSW, in my opinion. They didn't work for me. But for pregnancy, you're on a whole different level of skin condition. And they really react so well. And I would make a body butter up with shea butter, with cocoa butter, and then with some jojoba oil, or you can use coconut oil if you prefer. Um, and then you would mix that all up and you can do it in a blender or you can do it with a whisk or a hand whisk if you want. Um, you melt it down and then you whisk it all back up again and it makes a really lovely body butter and you can make these at home yourself. And I really recommend making them at home yourself rather than going out and buying them because then you know exactly what is in the body butter. Also, there's no stabilizers or any preservatives or anything, so you're just getting the raw ingredients. And if you want to, you can put in a couple of drops of lavender oil or a couple of drops of chamomile oil um, just for a little bit of extra calming. And this really helps nurture the skin. Excellent for stretch marks, excellent for the elasticity, especially around the belly area. Really helps calm down that inflammation and really gives it that hydration and moisture that the skin is needing. Next up, I love French pharmaceutical products, La Roche-Posay, Aven, those sorts of brands. They all come with a little bit of a numbing agent in them, especially for intolerant skin conditions. And they really do cater towards the pregnancy mum with eczema, to somebody who's got just got mild dermatitis, that sort of thing. And I really love the Extra Calm. Please excuse how dirty it is because we haven't really used it for a long time. So it got a bit dirty. And then I really love the Cicaplast by La Roche-Posay as well. I think this is a really good cream and it comes in an SPF 52 so you can wear it as a day cream if need be and this really does did it turn my skin around a lot I have to say I would have no hesitation in recommending those. Next up we've got Bauman's which is a firm favourite as a natural product. They actually do this in a cooling cream as well so that can really help bring down that red hot itchiness that you get under the skin um, and I've got a code for this so I'll put that in the link below as well so you can get 20% off and then obviously my firm favorite, I've lost the top, but the Itch Relief as well by E45. And this has the numbing agent in it as well. And I would put this on in the evenings and this would really last me till about two o'clock in the morning with any itching that I might have for my extreme condition that I have. Um, so it just depends on how extreme you are as well. But I found this a really, really good cream. Please let me know down below in the comments what kind of products you've been using topically that's helped your eczema and atopic dermatitis during your pregnancy. And I wish you guys the very best with your new chapter ahead of you. If you enjoy this video, you guys, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button so you can join our community and you don't miss our next up and coming videos. And go ahead and check out over here all about the red light therapy, the LED light, how many nanometers you need, how frequently you need to use it, how how much they cost, all of that in this video right here. So go ahead and click on that one and I'll see you guys right over there. Bye for now.